everyone. In the previous videos, we have used the prediction error method approach in order to derive parameters of linear systems. However, this method is also perfectly applicable to nonlinear parameter identification, as we are going to discuss in this video using the pendulum model. The pendulum model you already know from many of our previous videos, and it's a classical example of a nonlinear ODE. In this nonlinear ODE with the two states, the pendulum displacement angle theta and the angular velocity theta dot, we have in total four parameters, which are the standard gravity g, the pendulum length l, the friction coefficient b, and the pendulum mass m. If we take a look at these parameter vector, we can normally say that the standard gravity is normally well known to us, and the length and the mass of a pendulum or any other object can be easily measured, for example, using a weight or any other measurement device. What normally is not so easily measurable or not so easily describable is this friction coefficient b. Maybe if you have specialized knowledge in mechanical engineering, you might be able to get an initial guess on b, but normally it's really hard to um, model um, parameter coefficient based on first order principles. So that's why in this video we are going to discuss how we can get this parameter b from data, so from an experiment. And in order to do so, we are first starting to write down our PEM approach problem using the previous um, equations for this nonlinear system. So we therefore need to define an optimization problem, which will be, of course, a minimization problem, finding b such that the cost function L of b, which is the sum of k equals 1 to capital M of y hat of k minus y of k, where y of k is, again, some measurement data or artificial data to the Euclidean squared distance is minimized. And of course, as a boundary condition, we consider that we have access, st structural access to the model, which is x dot of t f x of t for some parameter b. And we again consider that the initial state is given to us. Okay, so we now basically utilize this approach in order to find b. In order to do so, first we are going to need some ground truth data, which we can feed in into this cost function. So let's go into a practical programming example using this Julia notebook in order to first generate this ground truth data. In order to do that, we need some parameter values, which we have defined here at the very beginning. We also need to define our initial state and our time span. And then we are going to define our pendulum ODE, which is basically, as you can see here, pretty much the same equation as we have written here on the light board. In order to solve this pendulum ODE sufficiently fast and sufficiently well, we make use of uh, a standard ordinary differential equation solver toolbox out of Julia, which has many uh, efficiently implemented ODE solvers, which is the ordinary differential equation package. In this package, we making utilize of this solve command, which utilizes the so-called SIT5 solver. That is basically just a Runge Kutta update, so Runge Kutta variant. So a standard solver for ordinary differential equations. What we also do here is we ensure that with the extra argument safe at point 0 0.05, that the solver will feed back to us uh, outputs of the ODE, of the solved ODE at 50 millisecond time intervals, such that we get a distinct grid of data points, which you can utilize later on for minimizing this optimization function. In order to mimic real-world data, we also add some measurement noise, just standard additive uh, measurement noise without any bias, and we can then visualize our ground truth data, especially here the noisy data with the special, uh, with the special noise uh, addition. And what we get is basically just the usual oscillatory behavior of the pendulum. 
However, we can see due to this friction, which we have modeled, that the amplitudes of the oscillations are decaying because the friction is basically getting energy out of the system and that means that the oscillation is damped over time. Okay, so we have now generated some artificial data which we can utilize in order to find a solution to this optimization problem. However, in order to do this, uh, apply this solution, we need to consider that actually our data is derived on a discrete time grid and our model which we have is an ODE model. So in the PEM approach, we need to make a little extension in contrast to the previous approaches where we have considered already discrete time systems or discrete time models. And that is that on the model side, where we had some x of t is now f of x of t, so an ODE, x dot of t of course, that we need to combine that with an ODE solver. That is the first component of the PEM approach. So combine the ODE model with an ODE solver and from that we will get estimates of y hat and we are going to feed that into our optimization solver. So some optimization package from Julia for example and this will solve for b hat or b such that this error between the estimated y and our artificial data of y is minimized over time. So here a little bit new addition we need now a model description plus an ODE solver such that we are able to generate y hat in this nonlinear case. Let's go back to the code. How did we solve that? How did we implement that? And what are the outcomes? So in order to train this model, we have first defined a little bit uh, modified ODE here. And this modified ODE now takes an external parameter p and this uh, parameter p is actually only this friction coefficient. So p1, that's the only parameter which we parse to the model, and that is actually this friction coefficient b if you compare the model uh, description here with our ODE representation, then you see that b and p1 are actually identical. Okay, so we have our model, so this is the first part here of the PEM approach, and then we need to plug this model in an ODE solver and form a cost function. So our cost function is now basically a combination of our ODE solver, which we can see here. This ODE solver is then also uh, updated based on new parameter guesses. So this remake function is basically updating the internal model for different B values, which we're going to optimize or, or train with the optimization solver. And then based on the solution of the ODE solver, we can uh, return the sum of the squared errors as we have denoted here in our cost function. So therefore we have a nice package in this cost function which basically incorporates not only uh, the um, cost itself but also an ODE solver which will help us to generate the cost value. Again, this cost function is then thrown into an optimization solver. Here again we utilize the optim.jl package. We again use the Newton solver as an arbitrary starting guess for the B value. We just use one just as a standard guess. Here we have some extended trace output of the solver, not really important to us. What is important to us is basically here the status information. So the solver has succeeded successfully the objective seems to be quite minor. And we can also see interestingly that the solver only needed three iterations and very minimal function calls in order to solve this optimization problem. And we will see just in a second why that is the case. If we then compare the found um, 
value. So rest.minimizer is basically a um, function call for the optimization solution in terms of B. And when we compare the found parameter B with the ground truth parameter B, we can see that except for some numerical deviations, that is basically the exact value. So the PEM approach also found the correct value here for this uh, friction coefficient in the pendulum example. When we then compare the uh, PEM solution, so the predicted states using the PEM identified model and the ground truth noisy data, we can also see that more or less in the previous plot where we have generated the noisy measurement, the artificial data, that this is perfectly laying over each other, which is no big uh, surprise because the parameter B could be found ideally. One final highlight I would like to make here in this notebook is that the solution of this optimization loop that came very quickly to us, so the solver just needed, I think it was three iterations, and that is because the optimization problem was quite um, well behaving to us in that sense. If we plot the optimization costs, so the identification costs of the residuals between model and measurements, over different values of the friction coefficient b, we can see that this is basically a very nice cost function because independently from where I took an initial guess that if I apply any gradient descent based method like the Newton method, that this will very nicely drop down into this optimum here where we only have one from, so that means that this local optimum here is also directly the global optimum and that is actually the perfect use case for gradient descent based solvers like the Newton approach. And that's also the reason why it converged so nicely and quickly. We will discuss these conversion properties and potential issues with nonlinear parameter identification a little bit more in detail in the next video. In this video, your takeaway messages should be that the PEM approach is perfectly applicable also to nonlinear models, which is a big, big, big advantage and extension compared to the linear approaches like uh, ordinary least squares, which was only applicable to linear systems. And here we have a direct feed through towards nonlinear systems as well. We will discuss limitations and possible challenges of this approach a little bit more in detail in the following videos and I'm looking forward to see you there.